All right, WrestleMania season is over, and the end result is Cody Rhodes, your new WWE champion. And even though I lost the bet with Sports Illustrated's Justin Barrasso from the last show in which I said that Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins would win the tag team match, and it would strictly be just a one-on-one with no bloodline rules in night two, well, I was wrong. Justin Barrasso was right. He said that The Rock and Roman Reigns would win that tag match. And because of that, I now owe Justin Barrasso a $50 gift card to Sullivan's here in Southie. So, um, Justin, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, uh, or if you just think about this at any point in time in the future, I owe you a $50 gift card to Sully's. Um, but one thing that we got right, which goes back to the beginning of our WrestleMania coverage is that Cody Rhodes was going to win the championship, right? But he was going to win the championship with the rock involved in a storyline that was leading us not to the end of something, but the beginning of something greater, right? There was a storyline at play. What was it? Two months ago? We had a somewhat viral clip on this YouTube channel. Hit subscribe right now if you haven't already. And I think it's actually the number one video linked to the YouTube channel right now. If you go there, that I have that pinned to the top of the channel. We played the clip of The Rock on the Pat McAfee show on ESPN back in September, in which The Rock explains... He spilled all the beans that day. <laughs> he spilled all the beans. He explained why... The Rock and Roman Reigns did not headline WrestleMania 39 last year in SoFi. And he kind of explained why they weren't going to headline WrestleMania this year. Like, just because of the reasons for last year, it's the same reasoning this year. They needed, they needed to build to it. The Rock said, yeah, we can do the match one-on-one Rock, Roman Reigns, fine. But I can't just show up and then that's the match at WrestleMania. It's got to be a build and there's got to be a story that's unique that has a twists and turns and, and it results in something that is going to continue. And what we saw throughout since he did that interview in September and since we pointed it out, what we saw was that, like you said, he spilled the beans. He basically said Cody Rhodes is going to win the championship. The Rock is going to come back. And The Rock is somehow going to be involved. Now, we were wrong when we thought maybe... uh, I should speak for myself. I think you might have agreed with me on this. I was wrong where I thought maybe The Rock would come in. It would be a triple threat. And, you know, he would be in the actual title match on the Sunday night of WrestleMania. That turned out to not be the case. The Rock came back as the final boss, as the biggest heel in wrestling history. And in my opinion... The greatest version of The Rock that we've ever seen. Oh, you can't argue that. He, for as good The Rock was in the end of the Attitude Era, this is The Rock. This really is the ultimate rock. And it, it's funny what the WWE did throughout WrestleMania weekend when they had all their media one-on-one interviews, and not just one-on-ones, but some, you know, Triple H and Cody Rhodes and, and The Rock, they all go on, you know, all these shows, Pat McAfee, all the shows that are out there, they go on, they go on their media tours. And they were all doing the same thing, which was telling you how they swerved because of the Cody crybabies. And what have we been saying on this show? I can't, I, it's a dangerous thing if they actually did. They did not, let me, let me. For the, for the people in the back, for the people that just don't have the common sense and the people that continue to just get worked by every little thing that anybody in the WWE says that might look like it's pulling the curtain back and giving you a sneak peek at all the behind the scenes stuff. And they're going to do that with this YouTube documentary now on the swerve and how the Cody crybabies made the WWE yank the rock from the main event with Roman Reigns and put Cody back into the main event. They are just, they see the buzz. I mean, all they got to do is look at this YouTube channel. We put that clip out of The Rock on Pat McAfee. Then we continue to follow The Rock's progressions as the final boss. And we got videos getting 200,000 views, 100,000 views, 100,000 views. Like, we're not even a wrestling show. We have people in the comments going, this isn't a wrestling show? 
No, this is a sport. I've been doing this show for 15 fucking years. I, I mix in some wrestling, but wrestling has hijacked this show because of The Rock's reappearance in WWE, but not just his reappearance in the WWE, his reappearance in the WWE as the greatest heel that we've ever seen, the greatest version of The Rock that we've ever seen, the final boss. You think they just threw the final boss together like I'm making an Elio's pizza? No. I make that Elio's pizza in like 10 minutes in my Ninja Grill. That's it. I toss it in if I have nothing to eat for dinner and I got that in the freezer. That's it. You think WWE did that with the WrestleMania main event? You think WWE did that with The Rock, who's on the board at TKO? And that entrance that is just epic, that character that he has now, giving us the retro version of The Rock on steroids, not literally. Oh. I, don't, I don't think. But, but you get what I'm saying. Like, the, the, yeah, they're doing this documentary now, and they went on their media tour WrestleMania weekend, and they keep telling you how they swerved, and they, they want you to believe they're pulling back the curtain. Here's what they're doing. They, they did not swerve because of the Cody crybabies. They didn't. It, it, they would not have had Cody win the Royal Rumble and then point up at Roman Reigns. They needed The Rock to get involved in this storyline to become part of the bloodline and, and become this heel that they created. So how could they do that? They had that moment that we all agree didn't make any sense in the moment. But what did it do? It inserted The Rock. It inserted The Rock. It didn't have to make sense. And the, the other thing is, it, the Bloodline storyline was great, and then this capped it off. They needed The Rock to finish that storyline, too. They did. And again, they didn't finish anything. Like The Rock said on Pat McAfee in September. Yeah. They continued this. This was all part of the plan. They got the reaction from the fans that they thought they were going to get, and they had Cody come back and go, no, 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 I'm going to be back in the main event at WrestleMania. And then, because, it, like, again, that night with The Rock and Cody did not make sense at all. But we said it didn't have to because it just inserted The Rock into the storyline. And what it also did was, like, let me ask if people, like, in the comments, answer this question. If The Rock just came back and had that awkward night with Cody where Cody, like, you know, said, hey, you know what, I won the Rumble, I pointed at Roman, but I don't want this anymore. Essentially. Rock, you take it. That's what he said. Essentially. Let's say the Rock Roman this year was actually part of the plan and I was wrong. And they didn't swerve. Do you really think that the Rock could have showed up for two months as like the babyface Rock and had a good storyline with Roman Reigns? Do you, I mean, it would have been okay. No, yeah, it would have been watchable, but this was this was the best storyline in I don't know decades. Honestly, like yeah. it's might if you you're talking about the whole bloodline storyline. Well, but or just with the rock, these la, specifically these last two months, just with the rock. Yeah, it's I think the bloodline storyline as a whole is the greatest storyline that's ever been told. I think it's the greatest storyline in wrestling that's ever been told, and it just should go to show you like. You don't need to have the best move set to be a star. You don't need to do flips off the top rope. You, you know, you don't, you don't need to even go 100 miles an hour in the ring. You just need to be able to cut a promo and tell a story. And I know there's a lot of diehard pro wrestling fans and even pro wrestlers themselves that, that don't want to hear that because they don't have that in their toolbox. But the reality is, if you can talk and tell a fucking story, you can be a star. And that's actually your best chance to be a star. And they, these guys proved it. Cinema. This is entertainment. And The Rock is one of the most entertaining people in the world. But if he's a baby face against Roman for two months, I just... It, it, wouldn't, have the, it wouldn't have the depth, right? And... That, to me, wouldn't make sense. It also wouldn't have had the attitude error because Babyface Rock isn't doing any of those Yeah, things. they're doing a lot of things. Like, he's throwing F-bombs. They're yeah. going to Netflix. Like, there's a method to all this. And the final boss character is not something that they just whipped together last minute. Now, The Rock did an interview, I think, with Will Kane on Fox. Yep. And he said something that... Con I, I sent this to you. 
and he contradicted himself because he's like, oh, you know, I called Nick Khan in January and I brought up the idea of how about if I'm like the biggest heel of all time? It's like, all right, you called him in January? <laughs> so you called him before the Royal Rumble? Because the Royal Rumble was like the last weekend in January. Like, so the time, so if that's the case, then they didn't swerve yeah. because of the fans. It yeah. was all part of the plan. And then he also, in that same interview, I think, said something along the lines of like, you know, he went with it again. He's like, well, yeah, you know, we listened to the fans and then we changed the story. No, that's the they line. didn't. They listened to the fans. They got the reaction they wanted and they want the Cody crybabies to think that they swerved. And here's why. I love Cody Rhodes. You seem to love Cody Rhodes. We both think he should have won the championship. I thought he should have won it last year. I told you because of the Endeavor sale and even the Rock kind of hinted towards that. I think on the Pat McAfee show that it didn't happen. The Rock, uh, excuse me, Cody Rhodes wins it this year. He should be the champ. But let's be honest. I think that if you give someone that title and attempt to have like a really long run again without the whole Bloodline storyline, like the Bloodline storyline allowed Roman Reigns to have this crazy run because with so many different pieces involved in that family and even more, getting an outsider and Sami Zayn moving in. It was like watching a, t like a, like a Game of Thrones where it's like it a was. new character, a new character, it was. a new storyline. But with just one guy with no faction, as much as we love him, the b and being a baby face, which is never as exciting in yeah, wrestling. It it's just not. It stinks. He, he, he's Cody's great. I'm one of his biggest fans. I think he bet on himself. And I think just that moment where he's in the ring of WrestleMania with the championship is like the ultimate fuck you to anybody who ever, it's like the ultimate fuck you, even to the guy that decided to give him the belt now Yeah, to give him the title now, because it's like, dude, I left. I joined Bullet Club. I bet on myself. I'm, I was working in basketball gyms with 20 people in the stands. Like, you guys didn't see anything in me. So I went out, created my own character, and I got the people to buy in. And they bought in enough so that you had to bring me back for the greatest WrestleMania return of all time at WrestleMania 38. And then you had no choice but to give me that title because everybody loves me. I love him. You love him. We love him. I considered myself a Cody crybaby. But we have to admit that a Cody Rhodes title reign for a very long period of time as a babyface with no faction might get kind of old quick. And so I think WWE is going, oh, like they're giving the fans credit for this, right? They're giving the fan. And if you're a fan that thinks you are, you're getting credit for this, you're going to support this fucking the whole time. You're not, you're not turning your back on this because you made it happen. You made it happen. And that's what the WWE wants. They're going to have this documentary on YouTube that they're going to talk about the swerve and they'll have behind the scenes footage of people on the phone and people in private meetings. Just know that you can, I just want people to know when you're great at what you do, which is entertain and try to blur that line of reality, you can act in a way in which you make it look real. Like, that's a real thing. You can put on a performance even while it looks like the performance is over. You can say, oh, the curtain here. Let's look behind the curtain. Yet everyone behind the curtain knows that when the curtain gets pulled back, you're still kind of performing a little bit. That's what I think is happening. Do, do you see it the same way? Or do you think that they actually swerve because of Cody Crack? No, I don't think. I don't Because I don't think it's good for business to listen to fans because i think that's probably one of the biggest problems with aew that they kind of let the the nutcases run the asylum so and i also and I, I honestly think even even though it probably is a swerve i think even telling them that they're empowered is a problem because they're going to be in, they're going to think every single thing needs their input now and you're going to hear these people beating down the doors for every single decision WWE makes going forward. Yeah, I get there's a risk it's there, not. but I think that the reward is greater if they are going to... They need Cody and these fans to have that connection, like, long-term. They can't have that... They can't... They're making a major investment. When you win the WWE Championship, that is the company investing in you. Yeah. Like, they are, like... In Roman... Putting couldn't. fucking money... Not that they don't invest in everybody, but... No, 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 it, but the, the guy with the belt, especially that belt, 
That's the belt. Especially that belt, 40th WrestleMania, a storyline with The Rock, which, by the way, is continuing, and we're going to show you in a, in a minute Start, and talk about just that. starting, really. Again, what The Rock said on Pat yeah. McAfee. So you go back to the McAfee interview, and you see this play out, and you're like, wait a minute. The Rock said that in, on Pat McAfee in September, and you see how this is playing out, and you still think the Cody Crybabies <laughs> caused a swerve? No. They're going to tell you that because they need the fans to be connected to Cody forever, no matter what. Even if it gets a little boring and a little stale for the reasons that we just explained. Not Cody's fault. It's the reality of human nature. Yeah. Babyface, no faction, following up the greatest reign of all time from a heel with the greatest faction, with the greatest storyline of all time. This shit's going to be tough for him. That's a good point. Like, this is tough. They need the WWE. If they're going to make this investment in Cody Rhodes right now. they need all, He needs all the help. He he's got to have every yeah. fan supporting him. And how do you do that? Yeah, you said there's a risk with giving the fans that much power. But if they have the power thinking that their team, Cody, literally, WWE looks at the fans and thinks, wow, they're connected with Cody in a way that no one's ever been before. Yeah. Those fans ain't turning on Cody. They're not. Cody's a good dude. He portrays himself as this like he is. lovable character, right? Yeah. Um, you, you watch him talk, you're like, oh, this, this is my brother. Like, this is this is Cody Rhodes. Like, we love him. I mean, part of it's to do with his dad. Like, everyone has that. Yeah, everyone there. loves Dusty. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's like it's there's more than one family. <laughs> so I don't think they swerved at all. I think they're lying to people. I think yeah. not, I shouldn't say lying. They're working you. Yeah, they're doing their job. Like CM Punk once said. Everything is a work. It can and, be, maybe even if your bus gets set on fire. <laughs> so that's, well, let's get to it. Well, you know what? We kind of went off on the whole swerve. Let's just, Cody Rhodes, let's dial it back a minute. Real quick, WrestleMania 40. We did so much on the, the of previewing WrestleMania 40 and the buildup. And uh, we did it because we loved it. And we were having fun with it to the point where people think we're a wrestling show. We're not. We talk some wrestling, but it hijacked the show because it was that good. We're a sports talk show. My show has always been a sports talk show. I'm a former sports radio host. I've done TV. I've hosted TV shows with Super Bowl champions. Like, you know, I'm, I'm a sports columnist. I've broken some of the biggest stories in Major League Baseball. The biggest story in Major League Baseball, <laughs> by the way. A couple of years ago, Spygate. Anyways. This is a sports show. But we do wrestling. Wrestling hijacked the show. WrestleMania 40. Two nights. I hate the two nights. Yeah. This, and I, this is going to... I tried to not do that because I was, I, I looked at them and I was like, you cut this match, this match, this match. It ended up being pretty good. I hated night one. Okay. Loved like night-, night two because I think night two got off to a hot start with... Drew McIntyre winning the title, beating a banged up Seth Rollins, and then CM Punk's presence causing Drew to be so distracted <laughs> out there for such a long time that Damian Priest cashing his money in the bank. It was that was great. That was a great moment. That was a great start to the second night of WrestleMania. And then obviously you had the great Cody Rhodes winning the championship finish. Um, you know, obviously night one gets saved with the tag team match to end it. And I thought that, again, I'm watching that tag team match and it's making my point even more that you couldn't have The Rock versus Roman at WrestleMania right out of the gate. The Rock, I mean, his knee like gave out on him right away. Yeah. Um, he's, he's not he's, the youngest cat in the league anymore. He needed that tag match. Yeah. And everybody knew it. He knew it. And um, I, I, again, I, I think they still could have won. I think they still could have went the way that I wanted them to go and I predicted they would go, which is Cody pins the Rock Knight one because you still could have had the bloodline. But it's just, I guess the way they did it with the nostalgia, with the Undertaker, with Cena. Yeah, I liked it. But- the nostalgia of it was great. I will say, though, night two with all that nostalgia and everybody coming in, I was expecting Stone Cold Steve Austin to come out. And I'm a little disappointed that he did. Like, I- I'm disappointed he didn't come out. Yeah. Is that a contract issue, you think? I don't know. 
It's it's funny that you asked that though, because wasn't that when Cody and The Rock were on the roof? That was the truck. It was Cena. It was Cena and Stone, Stone Cold, Cold right? and we said it with Justin in the last show. Justin Barrasso from Sports Illustrated. We said, you know, did, did, we wonder if that had anything to do with uh, a preview of what's to come at WrestleMania. Because they were given they were given hints every week, and it's like, is that another hint? Well, WrestleMania yeah. forty, like Stone Cold's not at WrestleMania forty. Yeah, you know, like there is a major spider <laughs> it's a crawling center. up your it's a centipede. your microphone right now. That thing comes near me, we are ending this show. <laughs> that thing is the size of your cat. It's dead now. Okay, we're good. <laughs> Anyways, night two. Where were we? Uh, WrestleMania. Yeah, the nostalgia. WrestleMania forty. You don't have like Stone Cold didn't want to be there for that. I don't know. I hope everything's okay. Obviously, you, you know, personal issues can get in the way, especially if you're not a full full timer. But um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's hard have to the know. Cena, have it, Cena there, have the Undertaker there. Um, you know, I just thought Stone Cold that would have been. Was the Undertaker under the ring the whole time after he... Was he? I don't know. I saw a video of him, like, getting rushed. Did he get rushed out or did he get rushed in? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I will say Seth Rollins has got to be seriously banged up yeah. because they didn't even show him getting in the ring with the <laughs> Shield stuff. Like, they didn't... You would think that he's going to be the Shield wear the Shield vest, dyed the hair probably, what, after his match? Yeah. Look great. You too. thought I, that they would show him coming from the stands because that's just what the shield does. They yeah. come from the stands. They didn't show that, right? Did I miss no, it? No, no, no. They, and then suddenly he's in the ring, gets the Superman punch. And yeah. I think what is just, again, this is the long-term storytelling that the WWE does, which you can't possibly believe they did a quick swerve before Mania with The Rock and Cody. Especially when it's this good, too. If it... it like the, the, how good this was doesn't even make sense to believe it was a square because it was so well written. Every bit of it. Was, Everything. Yeah. Seth Rollins with the shield vest gets in the ring. Did you think up Ambrose on the ropes. is coming though? No. I did for like a- You uh, did think, for, think for Ambrose a, was coming? For a second no. because it took it took a while before any action happened when they were just shooting the crowd. No, once we didn't see- uh, I was du excited. Dust, once we didn't see Dustin didn't Rhodes. I really like him, but I, I was excited- I'm not a big Ambrose guy, but I was actually. Kind I wasn't of a big Shield guy. Oh, okay. I didn't. It wasn't. I don't know. I thought. I thought people overreacted <laughs> to the whole Shield thing. It wasn't for me. But that doesn't mean that doesn't match the storyline because as Seth Rollins is getting up on the ropes after the Superman punch, Roman has the chair. He looks at Cody. He looks at Seth. And what is that visual from Roman? Roman remembers the time that Seth turned his back on the Shield and smashed him with a chair in his back. Yeah. And that began Seth Rollins's road to stardom as a champion. And it ended the shield. And Roman always remembered that. And instead of going after Cody, he said, no, nah, I'm going to take this opportunity to yeah. return the favor. I got that receipt, big dog. Here it is. And what happened? It cost him the championship. And it's just cinema. It's like, you think that they just threw that together overnight? <laughs> Like I, I don't buy it either. I buy I buy that. And look, if Justin Barrasso was here, he would disagree me disagree with me so much. But like, I just believe in the long term storyline. I think there are so many different levels to storytelling in professional wrestling, specifically in WWE. That I just think somebody who. And I'm not trying to I'm not trying to sit here and say I'm more creative than you and I'm this and that. I just I know that myself, I'm a writer by trade. Like I got in the media as a writer. You can say what you want about me. You don't like the way I look, you don't like the way I talk. You, the one thing you cannot say about me is that I am a bad writer. You can't say it. I don't care what else you say about me. Fine, that's your opinion. You, I'm not a I am not a bad writer. That's I can write. If there's one thing that I can do that I can hang my hat on, I can sit there and I can write a fucking story. And having that skill set, I do feel like I can, I can understand like the writing aspect that goes into this is so much more intricate and like, I think people don't give the writers enough credit in professional wrestling. I think they think they just sit there, they show up, they throw something together and, and, Vince McMahon or Triple H just signs off on something. 
I mean, I think when when it comes to the in ring match, yeah, you get in the room, you know, you call time the day of the event, you get in, you talk about how it's going to go down. I don't know if there's much long term planning to the in ring, like yeah. the twenty minutes you get, right? Like, there's not. You do it. You talk about it. You do it in the ring sometimes. Most of the time, right? You call it in the ring. Um, and maybe I'm getting, you know, out now I'm getting out of my, my element by discussing the in-ring stuff. Cause obviously I'm not a fucking wrestler, but I am a writer. And so I know about writing stories and I just think the writers in the WWE don't get enough credit. And if you're going to sit there and go, believe everything they're telling you about the swerve, I just, I think you're being unrealistic. I think you're being unrealistic with the fact that you think this stuff just comes together so easily. It doesn't. Yeah. It takes a lot of people. It takes probably a lot of different, they probably have all these different options that they write out and they're picking them out and then they're like, ah, let's go this way. Let's go that way. But to go one way or another, you got to be thinking 10 steps ahead. You're writing out chapter one. You got to have some type of idea what chapter 10 is going to be about. And if you don't, then you take a step back and you get a coffee and you go for a fucking walk until you figure that out. <laughs> then you get back to chapter one. You get what I'm saying? Like there, there's, yeah. there's levels, levels to this stuff. And so when they're telling you that they swerved, I just think that's fucking, you're getting worked if you believe it. I, that, the story is too good. The final boss character is too good. It might be the best. It might be the best. I'm Everything about it. Yeah. Every moment of this, since, since, since Rumble, basically. Rumble kind of ticked it up, but really when The Rock showed up. Yeah. It's just been a perfect, perfect storyline. Yeah, I mean, the one hiccup in the storyline, if you will, again, is that moment. Yeah, but it was just Cody like a and The Rock. It was just a necessary moment, though. Because how else, if you let, let's say there's no swerve and you had the final boss character ready to go, how would you get the final boss character involved in the storyline? While... Making sure that Cody is like the baby face that everybody loves. Like you want the fans to fall for Cody again. Yeah. Because they. They kind of sp like spoiled it last year when he didn't win that. Because he had such momentum going into the last. Yeah. But, and then it's like you're trying to take away the obvious element of it too. The obvious element is Cody wins the Rumble again, points at Roman. Okay. He's going to finish the story. Yeah. You just muddy the water enough. Well, now you're yeah. like confusing people to yeah. the point where we were going like i think i was texting you the day before going you know what i roman might win this <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean like i might be wrong roman might win and he didn't but if he did i, I still would have been like i just would have been so entertained by yeah. by the it absurdity been, of it, it all been so brutal too it would have been amazing <laughs> it would have been amazing if vince was still here that would have happened i, I, think I, you're I actually right. believe that I, I think you're right <laughs> um because then you could go back to Triple H in the press conference after last year's Mania when he's like, the story never ends. Yeah. Uh, you, like, you never finish your story. Who are you? <laughs> yeah, who are you to finish your story? This I is thought WWE. about that. I'm like, is <laughs> last, so, month, so the night after Mania on Raw, which is historically like the best Monday Night Raw after Mania. Yeah, it makes um, sense. It's got to set up all the new storylines. Well, now. yeah, and the crowd's always supposed to be like the most raucous crowd of the year. And they open with Triple H. And by the way, I know they say that they did this, they do the smallest set, like entrance set, because they sold more tickets and more fans are in. Like for Raw and SmackDown, they did it the last two shows. And I actually like it better. Really? They're better than the big screen. Yeah. Okay. I do. I don't like it for the pay per views. Like okay. the WrestleMania 40 set was too low for me. Like it wasn't lodged, it, like WrestleMania 40, it had the big XL, but I still think it wasn't larger than life enough for me for the 40th anniversary. Like I went to the WrestleMania at MetLife, the first one where they had the Statue of Liberty above the ring. And like when you walk into the stadium that night, you're like, what the fuck is going on here? Like that's the reaction you should have to the set of WrestleMania 40. Yeah. 
And you know what else? I, I, I didn't really notice the set, so that, that probably is saying the same thing because I didn't really notice. Oh, you didn't even notice it? That's yeah. not good. Yeah, exactly. Like, That's it, not it, good It seemed at all. good enough to me, but You it noticed last year's set? Yeah. Last year's set so. was 39 yeah. in SoFi. You know what was great and about 39, WrestleMania 39, and terrible about WrestleMania 40? The lighting. Well, like the lighting in, in at Lincoln Field for WrestleMania 40 was so dark and like, it was kind of similar. You know what it is? It's probably just the outdoor stadium. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Because the, the only thing I did like about it is the aerial shots when you really saw how many people there, how it, how it all like fanned out. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, it's got to be the but outdoor stadium. That was kind of its own set. I, I, it almost felt like they didn't do anything special because that was the set. Like just being outside, just having those aerial shots. Yeah. I wonder I, if that was where they, their minds, mind was coming maybe. from. Maybe. I mean, again, the XL was big, but I think where their mind was is they put people behind the screen. Yeah, yeah. And if they did something big, I don't think that they could do that. Yeah. Um. So it's maybe a more ticket thing. But I also think, too, I didn't like the lighting at WrestleMania 40, but I just, thinking out loud, it's probably the outdoor stadium because I was just going to say... It seems similar to Tampa Bay, yeah, yeah. WrestleMania 37. And then I'm like, oh, Raymond James Stadium is an outdoor stadium. Um, but we were also spoiled. WrestleMania 39 had an unbelievable set. And the lighting in there, like that goldish red yeah. tint throughout the arena was fucking epic. That was epic. Yeah. That, that whole set and lighting at SoFi, they did that right. There are so many WrestleMania sets that confuse me. Like the one... The second one at MetLife, where it was just a big screen. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, what? Why would you do this? <laughs> like, what, what the fuck is going on right now? Did you not, you just didn't care about the set this year? It's baffling stuff. And then there's some sets, like, what's a... Oh, the, the, the best sets they've had are in New Orleans. WrestleMania 30 and WrestleMania 34. Those are the best sets. WrestleMania 30, it's the three X's, the huge... I feel like those were much bigger than the XL they had in Philly for 40. And then WrestleMania 34 was um, like the New Orleans, like what was it? The, the oh, glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All yeah, right. That, one. that was pretty good too. That was great. Yeah. That to me, that might be the best set they've ever had. It was huge. I just thought it was so much big. I don't know. I, I think I felt like WrestleMania 40 set should have been a little more larger than life. And it wasn't. But anyways, um, I don't even know how we went, got on that. Oh, the set on Monday Night Raw, the smallest set. I like it. Yeah. I like the smallest set for Raw. It's when they do it at the pay-per-views, I don't like that. Um, but the, the Raw after Mania, they open with Triple H. And he gets in the ring and Cody comes down. I was like almost internally begging for Triple H to like pull him in and go, Remember when you smashed the fucking throne? Like, mm -hmm. have that feud. And I know Triple H can't do it anymore. Yeah, that's it does stink, too. But if he could, you know that they would have that storyline. <laughs> that would be a great storyline. Yeah. They didn't do that. Um, instead, The Rock's music came. And The Rock, now it seems, he says he's going away for a bit. And that was kind of the rumor that he was going to go film a movie, what, maybe through July? Um which lines him up perfectly for SummerSlam, <laughs> right? In August. Where is SummerSlam? Do we know? No. I don't oh, know. I, uh, is it in... I'm not sure. Cleveland? I'm not sure at all. I think it's in Cleveland. I think they did that. The Miz and Logan Paul, it's going to be where the Browns play. Okay. I believe. Um, I think. Either way, SummerSlam is going to be huge, but that's a football stadium. That's another, you know... They need someone like The Rock to sell that place out. Not, they don't need someone like The Rock to sell it, it out. It definitely helps. Though. It will help. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it's clear that The Rock is going to be around. He's going to be back. He's going to be Hill Rock. And he's going to have something with Cody. Because in the ring, on Raw, the Monday after Mania, we're going to show you the clip, or at least we're going to, give you the audio and clip together some images because WWE had uh, flagged us for a couple videos previously. Um, but The Rock, he acknowledges Cody as the WWE champion. He says, you're my champion. But before I go and go away for a bit, there's something I got to give you. And he reaches in his pocket and we're going to 
let's let's play the audio and we'll put up some images of how this thing goes on um, after The Rock puts his hand in his pocket and then gives something to Cody Rhodes. So I guess we could talk over him handing whatever he's handing him. But then he says something after he hands it to him. So they don't even look at it. Cody doesn't look at it. He's got his hand in the rock system. You don't even have to open your hand to know what this is. Don't you ever break my heart again. If you smell what the final boss is cooking. So they did it again to us, huh? They gave us something that there's layers to this. There's questions being asked. There's a separate video that we're probably going to take from this and post it on YouTube and get people wondering what the hell's going on. Leave a comment to what you think is in Cody Rhodes' hand. Paul, what do you think is in Cody Rhodes' hand? I, I don't know, but watching it again this time, I think I saw I saw it as metal this time. I saw you it, did? I think I did. Are we zooming in? Are we doing a full zoom right now? <laughs> Let's get the, the Pat McAfee Telestrator out for this one. They didn't do anything like that, right? No, you know what was weird? The announce team I didn't even like they didn't even mention afterwards like what could that be? Wait, what do we got? No, I think that's just the mat. I can't tell. You can't tell. I think it is the mat in the background. You know, I wouldn't be surprised obviously he didn't put anything in his hand. You know, in that moment, and the story is that he did. Yeah. It's it's what are we? What do we think is supposed to be in Cody Rhodes' hand right there? And what does it relate to? I've seen rumors on the internet, and you said it to me before we came on. Is that yeah? The big rumor it's a it's a lighter, a metal lighter, or some kind of lighter. A lighter, something that you would know that because he said you'll know what this is in your hand. So it's something and he didn't that look you at it. Know. Knows it right away just by feeling it. We got to know what he means, but does he know by feeling it or does he know just by knowing that The Rock has something that's his or is it both? Because again, we have to mention people are saying on the internet that it's a lighter, but however, people in the wrestling community in the internet are wrong about 99% of the time. So, but it would be really fun if they pull in his bus. But let's explain to people that don't know. There's a story that Cody Rhodes bus went up in flames or went on caught on fire what the night before yeah, mania night before. the only thing he saved was his boots that's what he said yeah did we boots. ever see any images of this i don't bus think so there almost was, burnt to the ground i don't think so there was a, i didn't see anything i looked i tried looking i couldn't find anything he thanked the fire department on twitter and there is a fire yeah but everything's a work there's a fire department tweet back which i think is even great greater so the the thought is that because Cody Rhodes' bus went on fire, because it got caught on fire, that The Rock is handing him a lighter as if to say, I tried to burn your bus down. I'm truly the, the final boss, the yeah. worst villain of all time. I am trying to murder you <laughs> and your family yeah. is, is kind of what the implication is there if that is a lighter. If it is, yeah. I was so here's what I was also thinking, and I don't know the answer to this yet. I think WrestleMania 41 is in Minnesota, or at least Minnesota is like trying to get the bid. We've mentioned it could be in Vegas. Let's say WrestleMania 41 is in Las Vegas. Yeah. The Rock hands him two dice. Right? And Cody feels the dice. Yeah. And the Rock says. You don't even have to. What did he say? You don't have to look at this. Yeah, you don't have to you, to. you don't have to look at this to know what it is. To know what it is. So you just have to feel it. Yep. Is it? You know, is it dice and saying that mania gonna, in Vegas? We're gonna. I'll we're gonna. See I'll see you. In, I'll see you in. La- I'm going away. That would be fun. That would be fun too. I, I was thinking it could. Initially, I thought it was something sentimental. 
to his father. But I just feel like that would be too obvious. It's a little too obvious. Like right? they're not being obvious with this. Stuff. And where do you go with that too? Like I'm not. I'm always like not. If that was true, where does that? Yeah, go? I don't know. I, I mean, I was thinking out. crazy. Like, is it like? women's earrings or something you, you know what i mean and how, it how, has like, to be small how weird too. are they gonna get with this yeah. could it be like uh roman's one of roman's beads or something i don't yeah. I, I don't know i but feel that like doesn't make sense either. it would make perfect sense if it was a lighter yeah it and does. it connected to the whole bust one on fire um Maybe Cody's bus did catch on fire. Yeah, I bet you it did. I bet you it actually kept caught on fire. It was a small fire. The fire department came and put it out. But for that, and then they were like, "Let's play let's into that." This. Yeah, let's use this now. That's possible. Um, it's possible. I just don't know that it's probable. I don't know that that's probable. If if I'm wondering if the bus catching on fire is actually real. Like, did it really? Did it actually happen? Did that actually happen, or are we getting worked? They did that to set this moment up. Like, I would believe that. Um, I, I don't. Honestly, I'm at a loss. Drop in the comments what people think. I, I think it. You, you might be right because I did a little search in Google, and then I just clicked news just to see what it was, and it was mostly, mostly wrestling blogs or wrestling websites, and also like a couple, like like Daily Wire, which just picks up whatever. So it kind of made me, there wasn't like a local. Cody bus fire. I am searching that right now on Twitter. Yeah. And, you know, I don't, immediately there should be a picture Yo, that what? shows up. It's a little weird. And it doesn't. Right? It should be the first photo that shows up. So maybe that's what it is. Or just even a local news story. Like if it was real, that would be a big story. WrestleMania is in town. Cody Rhodes bus catches fire. Local fire department puts bus out. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like that would exist, and it doesn't. exist. It doesn't exist, as far as I can see, at least. I'm I'm WrestleMania 41. Um, it's rumored to take place in Minnesota. WrestleMania 41 rumored to take place in Minnesota. So it's probably not nothing to do with that. I wouldn't say. Uh, I don't know. It. I don't think that's. I think that's not official yet. Las Vegas and Minnesota rumored. This is in February of 2024. It's not coming up where it is. The other thing is... So it can't be official yet. The other thing is, like what you said, maybe it's nothing. Maybe he didn't. Maybe they didn't actually figure out what they put in his hand yet. Oh, that is a good point. You know, like, like let's just figure... We can, we can worry about that no, in a couple I, months. No, you know what? I'm sorry. That, that, I, that's <laughs> not what it is. Because again, that's... We're getting... We're, now we're giving... The Cody crybaby's too much credit again. <laughs> Let's give the writers credit. No, but I'm saying they, like if... They're not winging this. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying like what if... Like what if it is, could be a Vegas thing, but they don't have Vegas yet necessarily? Oh, they... So, uh, like so you, you kind of... No, the then I think open. they wouldn't have even done this. Yeah. But you could... You still have the back... The fallback of the bus. So now it's, a, now it's back to a lot. Hmm. <laughs> what is in Cody Rhodes' fucking hand? <laughs> We're not going to know for a while. He either. knows by feeling it, or he knew he was missing something. I don't know. I love it. Though. I don't know. I love it. They, they got us again. Yeah. <laughs> they fucking got us again. Already, too. <laughs> One raw in there to get us back. <laughs> it's only opening day at Fenway today, and they already got us hooked on next year's Mania. I mean, it could be something for SummerSlam, too. Yeah, I think it's... I don't know. What, I mean, it's got to be something that fits in your hand. I don't... I, I don't know. It, <laughs> it's not brass knuckles, you would think. I and mean, I, though, again, I Cody, guess... Cody looked... Cody reacted, too. Cody... I don't know if he was mad or upset or something, but Co Cody reacted once, once it was in his hand. Yeah. So that... It has to be something that would make Cody upset in some way. Oh, yeah. He's upset. Yeah. So brass knuckles... And the, really but here's another, here's another part of this. Don't break my heart again. Yeah, don't break my heart again. What is that? Is that don't steal my mania main event again? I don't know. Is this The Rock's first moment? Here's another thing. I saw a Rikishi tweet. Something about like, I don't know that I try. I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to pull this up. Hold on. Rikishi. 
tweeted something. Let's see. During Raw. Did he delete it? He said, oh no, he 19 hours ago, he said, we're recording this on Tuesday night. So he tweeted this during Monday Night Raw. Watching him closely, I don't trust what I'm seeing. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> he tweeted at 1.50 a.m. So he tweeted it after Monday Night Raw. Watching him closely, I don't trust what I'm seeing. Is he talking about The Rock? He's got to be. Or is he just drunk at 1 a.m.? <laughs> <laughs> he kept it up. <laughs> um, he's got to be talking about The Rock. So if you have members of the bl- actual bloodline not trusting what they're seeing, I don't, I don't, dude, I don't know. They got us. Yeah. We don't, we have no idea. No. Usually we have some like, we think maybe the bus, but I almost think like, if the bus situation was real, I don't think that's what's happening. If the bus situation wasn't real, then it's probable that that is a lighter in his hand. If WrestleMania is in Vegas, he could be handing him dice. And you feel dice, you know what that is. Like, if I put something in your hand, I don't think you would know ev- Like Not everything. It's no. got to be something specific yeah. that you feel that you know. Either that you feel specific or that you know you're missing. Yeah. Don't break my heart again. It's got to be... I really don't know. Is it break, Don't Break My Heart by stealing my mania main of, ruining my mania main of it? Don't break, here we go. <laughs> On the fly. Talk it through. <laughs> Mania's in Vegas. It's dice. Don't break my heart again. Meaning, don't ruin my WrestleMania moment. Meaning, don't lose that fucking title. I'm yeah. coming for it. Because he was, or we didn't play that part of the clip, but er, earlier in that clip, he says, they switch belt. He said, and he says, "This looks. This feels really nice." He said, "Yeah, he did." Yeah, he took the belt. Yeah, ooh, he took the belt, the title. Cody let him, and everyone, everyone's like, "This is awkward," because it was, it was awkward. And he put the WWE Championship over his shoulder, and he said something along the lines of, "This feels right." Yeah, yeah. And then he gave it back, and then he gave Cody this, and he said, "Don't break my heart again." You'll know what this is by not even looking at it. Here's the guess. Maney is going to be in Vegas. And it's something that we... Unless they already said Minnesota, and this is a moot point, but... <laughs> and, and give us, you know, we don't, we don't know yet. We didn't look that. We should have looked that up, sorry. Put it in the comments if, it, if it's in Minnesota. Maney is in Vegas. It's Dice. He says, don't break my heart again. This title looks good. I'm coming for that title. Don't ruin my WrestleMania main event. And if you're not the champ, I'm coming for you and that title, then you're going to ruin my WrestleMania main event. It's dice in his hand. That's got to be it. I like it. And because, you know... I really don't know. You know what that then does? That allows them to have Roman come back Maybe win the title and then have Rock Roman. Rock's coming for the title. I don't fucking, nah, I don't know. I don't, know, I don't see that. No, I, I know. I know. That's that, yeah. I'm just thinking on the fly. No, I know, I know. But I was I was close. I'm like There's something. Because I did read a rumor that next year's Mania main event, they're thinking about the rock. Like they're already thinking about what that's gonna be. They might already know. Leaning towards something. If it's the rock Cody for the WWE championship. Maybe it's the triple threat, dude, next year. Maybe. Don't break my heart again. If Mania's in Vegas, it's dice. You know dice when you got him in your hand. But Cody, ah, Cody was really mad. He was mad, yeah. He was mad. Yeah. That's why... It, Maybe it's it not. It feels like it's the bus again. It feels like it's the bus again. Yeah. Man. We tried. Yeah. We tried. Yeah. Put it in the comments what you think is happening with Cody Rhodes and The Rock. But either way, they got us. I guess we're now continued to be hooked to WWE. Um, it's the exact type of thing that like AEW just can't do. They can't, from a storyline perspective, like 
give you something. Like they're gonna put the video out of CM Punk. <laughs> no one cares. Now. And who's the dude that he choked? Uh, who's the guy? I forget. This is fucking nasty. Even... This is bad. Yeah. Um, Jungle Boy. There you go. Jungle Boy Jack Perry. Yeah. Luke um, Perry's kid. <laughs> yeah. I that that's a little disrespectful than forgetting his name, but. <laughs> Um, they're gonna play the video of the behind the backstage stuff. I I don't even, I don't care. That's stupid. Yeah. The the one thing they could do, I don't know if they're doing this. If they are leaning into the young bucks as the EVPs, if they kind of play, the young bucks could definitely that they actually could capitalize off that in the current role that they're doing, which is great. I think they just need Tony Khan to join them. Tony Khan needs to like get on yeah. camera. Be like the like the goofy corporation, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and actually run the run the company. I don't know if they're just doing that to get back at Punk and all the shit. Like I did watch a little bit of Edge's Edge had a promo, okay, I last week because CM Punk went on Burial Hawani and just buried AEW, yeah, and then you had some other people burying AEW, um. And I think AEW felt the need to defend themselves, so they sent Edge out there to cut a promo last week saying, basically, like, from the heart, well, we think it's from the heart. Could have been written, and, I mean, you make enough money, you're going to do what they tell you to do. But I didn't like the promo. I thought it was corny. I thought it was unnecessary. And I thought it was below someone like Edge because he was doing the promo, promo in an arena that didn't even have anybody in the balcony, right? Like, and I think Edge was saying stuff like, this is the most fun I've ever had in my wrestling career. It's like, dude, come on. <laughs> really? You fucked you cr- fucking, fuck Christian before. <laughs> you fucking wrestled at WrestleMania how many times? Yeah. WrestleMania. And this is the most fun you're having? Fighting Christian over <laughs> and over in front of nobody? Yeah. Come on, dude. I love Edge. That is just a dumb thing to say. That's a company line. That's why I say, like, all right, maybe it's not from the hot. I just thought it was below him. And, and somewhat pathetic. And then you got this thing where they're going to show the CM Punk video footage. I don't even, I don't care. Um, does anybody care? Do you care? Not anymore. If they were going to show video of the fight with the Bucks and Omega, <laughs> then I would be like, ah, it's a work again. Like, yeah, go with that. Yeah, if, if it was a work, then you'd want to see it. But now that it, it, it almost seems like an ex-girlfriend thing to do. Yeah. That's what it feels like. Well, me. I mean, I think, look, I they have every right to be pissed at CM Punk burying the company. I don't know that w- that what was. What he said, though, wasn't false. Like he said that as soon as Tony Khan doesn't want to keep dumping money into this, it's not going to exist. And how can you not feel like that? Like that's what it feels like from the outside. They're not. They're not lighting the world on fire at AEW. No, there was well mom- for reasons that, that we mentioned. Yeah, when Sasha Banks comes out, um, Monet, <laughs> Mercedes, Monet, and her debut at the Garden, they. Could have easily made that they could have elevated an even it. bigger moment yeah. instead of just having her walk away and then come out later in the night against two women that I don't even know who they are. Yeah, and just, I'm out. Just a missed. I'm out. You lose me. Exactly. It's the complete opposite of what did The Rock put in Cody's hand? Yeah. Right. And that's such a disservice to her because she's great too. So that's, she's that's great. Stinks. She's great. If she got her payday, like, good for yeah, her. Yeah, good for her. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Like, she but ain't, like, the- like we mentioned in our initial reaction to that, because of that payday, she ain't running to management. Yeah. She ain't running to creative going, Yeah. What are you guys doing? Not right away. She might do that in like a couple months. <laughs> but right now, you know, that, that payday's got to feel pretty good. You give me $10 million, you can put me in any storyline right away. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Put me in polka dots. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, look, we've given AEW plenty of credit. We don't have to keep saying it. And I feel like other people are kind of 
piggybacking off this thought that we have brought up many times is um, I don't think WWE would be as good as it is right now without AEW. Yeah. The well, competition from somebody spending that type of money did a couple things. I mean, it gave wrestlers in both companies bigger paydays. Um, and there's just more competition. And if WWE had has competition, which they have now, it is. It's competition. Whenever yeah. somebody no, definitely competition. is paying money to steal your wrestlers away, that's competition. Yeah. I don't care what the end result of that product when they get the wrestler is. It's if there's somebody that's a threat to steal your talent because they have a lot of money, they're competitive. Yeah. And they're on TV, like TBS, TNT, a major, major networks. And, and j- just the fact that Cody Rhodes had a place to go and become the Cody Rhodes that just won the championship back in WWE. That was AEW. He, yeah, Cody, he, I mean, Cody created, that Cody created that company, though, too. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's a lot of things that happened that we could say, I don't think, like, Tony Khan didn't just, like, look, let's give Tony Khan some credit. He didn't just dump money into a shit, into a shit group of wrestlers. No, he picked he, a lot he, of right he got guys. Yeah. a great group. Like, they had to pitch that to him. He had to think about, this wasn't like a, let's do it overnight. That's a business decision. Yeah. But Cody was part of that group. You know, if Cody doesn't leave WWE, go to Bullet Club, how many eyes are on Bullet Club enough to convince Tony Khan to want to spend that type of money? If Chris Jericho doesn't interrupt Kenny Omega, are there enough eyes on them to get Tony Khan to be convinced to spend this kind of money to get this project off the ground? It's a big undertaking. I don't care how much money you got. And, uh, you know. And no one's won before. No one's ever beaten. Very, maybe a moment Ted Turner beat WWF. Maybe a moment. Yeah, I mean, WWE is a machine at this point and never going to slow down. However, there were definitely moments in which it went somewhat stale yep. and they needed competition and they got it and WWE benefited from it, benefited from it. So as much as we sit here again and knock AEW, they, uh, they deserve a lot of credit for the product that we currently see in the WWE, but that doesn't mean that the product in AEW is, is worth my time right now. Like, yeah. sorry. Like, I, I just, you gotta, you gotta, I'm a mainstream wrestling fan. Like, I don't even get, like, I'm un- closer to Undisputed watch. Kingdom is great. Yeah. But even when I'm watching, I feel like, I feel like they're not doing Undisputed Kingdom justice because I just think the way it's portrayed isn't as good as it could be. I just, like, I think they have something there they could, and then they just can't seem to take it to the next level. Not the talent. The, the storytelling, yeah. like the right, the writers and maybe people saying this, Tony Khan making decisions. I don't know, but, um, maybe it's Adam Cole's hurt. Maybe that's it. That could be, that's probably it. Maybe he comes back and that faction is just, you know, um, lights out, but look, the edge, I didn't like the edge, um, promo. I think CM Punk could have easily not did that interview. Or at least gone into that the way he did. Um, but I also don't, I think AEW should just fucking ignore it. Like just just do your thing. Yeah. Do your thing. You know? Try to do something with the dude Will Ospreay. Because I'm not I'm not there with that. <laughs> you gotta have there's gotta be something more there with him. Great athlete. Pulls off crazy shit. But some of the stuff is like you know, oh man, did he break his neck? Yeah. Did he break the guy's neck? Yeah. I don't want to watch that. I don't either. He, you know what I mean? Like, they're what, pushing it way too doing? far. You're, you're asking for something to happen if you keep doing stuff like that. Yeah, it's the, weird, the one, right? Yeah. The one specifically, like in the corner on the ropes, was wild to me. It, it's just. Yeah, that one move, the big movie did. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. You couldn't pay me enough to take that. 
I mean, I didn't really know who he was before I started seeing all the horrible things he, all the amazing slash dangerous things he's done. Yeah, so, like, he's really I get strong why. style, New Japan, but there's got to be a limit. Yeah, exactly. And it seems like exactly. some of these guys like him don't have a limit to so the point where I'm watching going, yeah, I don't, that's kind of cringe. Like, did he break his, the guy's neck? It looked like he did. Like, I don't want to see that. I don't either. That's- I don't want to have to go, oh, shit, is that dude really hurt every time no. I watch someone? No, I'd rather just... It's a, it's, it's, it's a story, man. Tell That's a story. What you are saying before. Tell, Tell a, a story. story. Exactly. Tell a story more than looking like you, I've, you're breaking a guy's neck and I have to, like, turn away every two minutes. People say, like, oh, stop being such a pussy. Shut the fuck up. It's, 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 it's a... I don't want to see something be paralyzed. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so sorry. It's a Broadway show, man. Not yeah, exactly. You know, if you want to do full scale fucking <laughs> MMA, fucking get in the octagon. Yeah, that's what it's Because then you watch it and you can expect something like that to happen. Yeah, yeah. It's a little too much sometimes. I don't. I don't get it. Anyways, you need a story. You need a fucking story. They got one with Undisputed Kingdom. I just hope they don't ruin that shit. I hope they don't ruin that shit. Um, what else, dude? Oh, should we? They didn't, let's wrap this up because we've gone a little longer than we probably wanted to. Um, Brock Lesnar is not erased from WWE. Nope, they not can, at all. They have him. I, <laughs> they do have a little clip of him in the new open they have, the then, now, forever, together. Yeah. I believe this, I've been, it looks like him. I'm not 100%. I thought it was him. Yeah, it is him, right? Paul Heyman mentioned him a couple times, which I wasn't sure they were going to do. Stephanie McMahon is back in the mix. I love seeing that. Yeah. Um, and I know that there's probably some people that are on, are on Twitter like not liking that, but tough shit. <laughs> Stephanie McMahon is there. It's the wife of Triple H. If you don't like it, don't fucking watch. Good for Stephanie showing up and being there. Yeah. Love it. Love it. And I love that they didn't get rid of Brock Lesnar because... I still think that he's probably putting up a fight legally behind the scenes. Like, you cannot fucking erase me for this allegation that you have to prove. And if you, you really want to do this, you, you want to do this, you sure? Yeah. And I don't think they're sure. <laughs> Would you be? I wouldn't want to. Like, there's a lot. But, again, it's easy to get rid of Vince because he sold the company. And I, I think there's people yeah. internally that probably were looking to move on anyways. Um, and it was that was just too much noise. You couldn't keep him around. But I am glad Stephanie is back, at least it seems. And I'm glad they did not delete Brock. Um, I don't know when we'll see Brock, but Triple H was asked about it. And he said, Brock, he's still at the company. He's just home being Brock. <laughs> so we'll we'll see how that plays out. But um, the Hall of Fame, they opened with Lesnar, excuse me, oh, with Lesnar. They opened with Paul Heyman. And the only reason I can think of that they did that was because Roman Reigns inducted him, gave the opening speech, and Roman was probably like, you motherfuckers Get want me, me to do this, yeah. you want- then we're doing it first. Yeah, you make me work three nights. <laughs> right? Because... You know, wasn't the most exciting Hall of Fame class that they've ever had. I only watched the Heyman part. I watched all of it. Yeah, I didn't. Because The Rock and The Undertaker came out. The Rock came out and got the championship from Muhammad Ali's widow. And that was the championship The Rock had over his shoulder on Monday Night Raw. Yeah. Um, Which, you know. It's a little goofy. I think it's a little goofy. I'm like, you have to have a belt, Rock. You have to have a belt. And I don't know if are they selling that? Oh, they probably are. Yeah. Are they selling it? Probably. I don't know. Is that know. the only that's the only reason he's wearing it? Maybe. No, well, I started to wonder. They did this and they gave him the belt as a the Muhammad Ali tribute. Like whose idea was that? Yes, the rock. Was that the WWE and the Rock's idea? Right? Yeah, it was definitely you know the I mean? Rock's idea. I don't um, even believe that Muhammad Ali told him he could use the people's champ thing. I don't believe that. You don't believe that story? No, I don't believe that at all. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think he's making that up, dude. <laughs> I think no, I don't think he's up. making that up. Rock, I believe you. <laughs> I believe you, Rocky. I believe you. The final boss. What a fucking character that is. It's the greatest. The final boss. 
It's a great. I'm, I was surprised as I'm wa- every time I watch it, I'm like, I'm surprised nobody's called themselves the final boss before. Well, I think they, in wrestling. I, Did I, someone? Yeah, I think there's a couple people. Oh, really? Yeah, I think even someone in AEW, maybe uh, Samoa Joe might be calling himself the final boss. Oh, really? I read that, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, I like Samoa Joe, but that tells you a lot if you don't know it. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, if it doesn't jump right out at me, it's just whatever. Joe, I love you, but this is the, what The Rock did this with This is it. the final boss. What The Rock did with it. Like, he is yeah. the final boss. He gets it. So what happens with Roman? Because Roman, we buried the lead, maybe. Roman posted a video of himself working out day one. Yeah. What? And and Triple H even said in the press conference, Roman, what he's about to do is, I'm paraphrasing, but he's like, we'll blow your mind or be even better than what he did before. How do you top what he did before? So what is happening with Roman? Baby face. Baby face. No, Roman. hell no. Paul, they can't do that. They're gonna. They can't. They're gonna take the bloodline away from him. They've already kind of showed you that, like the crap. Are they gonna take they Haman away from him? No, they're not going to take Heyman away. Ah, uh, dude, you no, know what? No, Heyman, by the no, way, no. I love Paul Heyman. Love Paul Heyman. How can you not? Um, I study Paul Heyman. Paul, are you going to be canceled? Because you made it sound like in that speech that, like, we should be getting ready for you to be canceled for something. That was what I was thinking. And I'm like, this is why they're putting him in the Hall of Fame so soon. Because I did think they were putting him in early. It did seem weird why to do it. Yeah, maybe just because behind the scenes, I knew Roman was ending. He wasn't winning. But it seems like like Roman is going to be around again. Yeah. I don't think Roman's going away to Hollywood. I think Roman's... Roman might be on SmackDown. By the time you're watching this, Roman might be on SmackDown with Paul Hammond. Without the title. That would actually blow my mind. I think think you're not going to see him for a couple months. I think you might see him on SmackDown. You know why? Because was it Cody who tweeted? Or Cody said something. Was Cody on the McAfee show after he won the title? Yeah. And said, all I can say is you're going to want to watch Monday and Friday. Mm. So if he says and Friday, which he did, and The Rock is done, who's coming on Friday? It's got to be Roman. It's got to be Roman. It's not Seth. He's out. He's hurt. He's the one that's going away. He's hurt. They did the Drew McIntyre CM Punk thing on Raw. Um, who else? It's got to be Roman on, on SmackDown. He's got to be on SmackDown. If he's going to be around, he's got to come back right away. He's already posting on social media. Yeah. He, he's back. But is he going to be with Heyman? Because Paul Heyman gave the speech, which was like, started to make me scared that like he was maybe somewhat involved in something. <laughs> and like, because he's talking about being canceled. And he got fight up about it. He's like, you can't, can't cancel me again. And I just thought, I'm thinking, they're inducting him earlier than I thought they would. And he's talking about being canceled. A little too much here. What's happening? I hope, I could, I, I hope that I I'm just... I think you're reading into it. But good, I, good, yeah. good. I hope that's all it is. Yeah. Hope that's all it is. Because we love Paul Hammond. Yeah. I, we won't cancel Paul Hammond. Unless, no, it's, can, no. unless it's, you know... <laughs> <laughs> you know um, alright what else I think that's it I think we covered it Wrestlemania weekend a success I wish it was one night but we did get the tag match and then the great main event night two and now we wait we wait to see what happens um, I think we'll wrap it up it is late on this Tuesday night and uh, we had to jump in here and react to Wrestlemania um, next show, maybe, you know, we'll react some more to what we see with this playing out, but we will have to get into, you know, we got some Red Sox stuff we got to cover. The NFL draft is coming up. The Masters is this weekend. I know we can't really go from the most exciting <laughs> event of the year to the Masters. I, I get that. <laughs> but, um, what else do we got? I mean, we're going to have Stanley Cup playoffs and NBA playoffs soon. So we'll have that to talk about. And, um, Really, anything else that pops up in the sports world? I mean, as much as I'd like to talk about baseball, it doesn't get the views on YouTube, one. And two, 
they can't even keep the biggest scandal in the history of the league in the news. <laughs> and Shohei Otani. That's how little people... Shohei Otani, my opinion, based on the... Based on common sense, this is my opinion. Based on common sense is that Shohei Otani lost $4.5 million betting on sports. And it's if that is true, it's more probable than not that he bet on baseball. In my opinion, this is my opinion based on common sense. <laughs> and they can't even keep that shit in the fucking news. I know. That's how dead baseball is. Isn't that sad? It is. Because I love baseball. But we're going to wrap it up. Hit subscribe. Follow on social media. Um, we will be back soon enough. Until then, see ya.